Hey Stranger Things fans, Bored now back with you on this video, back to the upside down world of Hawkins, Indiana. On this video I will be talking about Stranger Things 3, Episode 5, Chapter 5, The Flayed. Full spoilers from the start of this review and another really enjoyable and solid episode of Stranger Things with another very dramatic and tense ending I'll say as well. Once again this episode when it needs to goes to some really dark and disturbing places but some great scenes of horror as well and I think one of the reasons I enjoyed this season of Stranger Things is just a lot of the stuff that then it's like winking and nudging at or referencing and, and how it turns that into something of its own. So you've got like a little bit of like a Terminator reference in here. At, at one point, Prometheus is mentioned, like an alien reference. It's just so much of the stuff which I enjoy in movies. So it's really this season and this episode is ticking a lot of those like niche niches for me but I'll start with the group of Steve, Erica, Robin and Dustin because the sort of cliffhanger at the end of the last episode or one of them at least as far as this group goes is then they got trapped in the elevator uh, they, you know, because they got hold of that canister of like the sort of substance which looked very sort of like ke chemical and slimy, but that set up set off a booby trap. So as we open this episode, they're dropping dramatically in in this elevator. They're screaming for their lives. Steve has a line about how Russians don't know how to design elevators. And once again, there's some good squabbling in this where, where Erica, who tends to always call them nerds now, she really enjoys running them down, calls them nerds again and says, look, I've, I'm supposed to be at my friend's <laughs> dinner party right now. And if I'm not at my like grandfather's birthday tomorrow, people are going to start freaking out and... So once again, there's some great, great banter, but I did enjoy Steve's line about R Russians not knowing how to design their elevators. So, and they sort of, Dustin wonders if they can, like, climb their way out, like, to the top and escape that way. And him and Steve go up on the top. And this is one of my favourite shots in the whole episode because literally you get an aerial shot that, that the camera looks up from their point of view and Steve's like, what was that about us climbing out? So as the episode goes on, they have to like just wait around and they actually sleep in the elevator for like something to happen and Dustin is once again teasing Steve about mm, so you spent the night with Robin did you I heard you two talking all, all, all night long I also enjoyed Erica actually having the idea of maybe if they needed it for survival like drinking the the substance in the canister and Robin obviously pointing out that's not water, but and Erica's like, well, if it's if it's a case of this or nothing, then I'm gonna take my chances with this. And what's clever about that is the canister becomes important in the next sort of scene because, like, it's some sort of like delivery type thing comes around and the the lift is like like opened so it's their opportunity to like sort of sneak out but they have to wait for it to pass and and do do what it's doing so they sort of then put the canister like to prop the the lift up like the lift door and they have to like try to escape then one by one but eventually the canister gets smashed into like smithereens and the gunk goes everywhere so it, it's sort of a mixed bag because obviously they were hoping to, to keep that as some sort of evidence but obviously in the end they managed to get out which is is a is obviously a good thing and they find their way to like this control room 
and there's obviously this guy in there and Robin tries to cover by saying that they're you know they're blue cats or like reading the code back to him but there's a good moment for Steve because when the jig is basically up the the Russian guy at the control starts screaming and, and well he just goes for Steve and they get into like a fight and Steve for the first time in Stranger Things history, actually wins. He knocks him out with the, with I think it's like a joystick or like the microphone, and it and and Dustin marks it out as well. It's it's absolutely glorious, and so a good character moment for Steve as he actually won that fight. And I sort of like it how it feels like pretty realistic as well because. At the end of the day, it was just like this guy in the control room he beat. So it's not as if it was someone who was like too muscly. But I, I do like him having that moment and him actually getting the knockout on this guy. And they start putting together that they think they might be developing some sort of nuclear weapons. And they actually see some evidence of that where they, when they then come across this the sort of like the big um well ray gun if you want to call it that which is some sort of nuclear weapon which the russians are are using to try and open the gate to the upside down and they just see this and once again i know some people are a bit up and down on the effects this season i think some feel then they go a bit too far at times and maybe they do but this is one effect that looks really good and just the design of this gun looks so so good so yes yeah, some fun stuff again in that group and once again the plot is moved forward so i'll switch over to joyce hopper and their side of the plot so they go and they go to the house where this biker it is like attached to and they start searching around the house it's on this farm and they find then there's like a some some sort of like room like underneath the floorboard so they start looking about there and they come across these two russians in the basement and one of them is is this character alexei who Hopper hilariously keeps calling Smirnoff Smirnoff as a way to like demean him, but this is another like good, well directed tense scene because the biker comes home, and so they're down there, and, and Joyce has to tell them, you know, be quiet, and he's sort of stumping around the top of this floor, like creaking the floorboards, and and this guy, as you cut to him, because this is the first episode you get a proper look at him he just looks like a total terminator like that i think that's what they were going for the way he moves the way he sort of acts and talks he has a very robotic sort of arnie like tone like he does in the terminator and there's a good scene actually because hopper sneaks up behind him and he points a gun out and says and, and threatens to like shoot him and there's this cocky swagger to to like this this biker guys where they're like y- you won't kill me you won't shoot because you're a policeman and policemen have rules and and Hopper's like do you really want to try and call my bluff and they get into a fight and eventually they escape and I think the other because they're like two Russian scientists the the other one I think. I didn't quite see what happened to him. I think he got killed in the end, but or or he certainly didn't escape. But they escape with with Alexei, like they escape and and they go into the woods and they're they're heading they're heading to Chicago and the episode actually keeps this a mystery why, but it it turns out that it's because UFO nut guy lives there and. He's the nearest person they know who speaks Russian, which is sort of funny. And and they obviously need someone to talk to Alexei so he can give them a lowdown on what exactly is happening with the Russians and what what their plans are. But it's a fun little trip with this trio, and and Alexei is like this quirky, funny little character. 
Uh, so there's some good stuff with him and Joyce and Hopper's sort of being Hopper and being like impatient. But there's this fun scene where they just they come across this Seven Eleven and Alexi runs off. And at first they think he's trying to escape, and then he just locks eyes on the Seven Eleven and and his eyes like light up and. They sort of all get excited because they've basically been sort of hiking to Chicago, so a long way. So they're relieved to get some, you know, refreshments and fuel, and they stop off at the Seven Eleven. And the visual of like Alexi just like almost freaking out and getting high <laughs> on like, you know, it's like a slush puppy. It is one of the great shots of the episode, but my favourite Hopper scene in the episode might actually actually be when he takes this sort of rich snobby guy's like car, because they realise to to go the rest of the way they probably do on a car. It's like too far to keep walking all the way, <clears throat> and, and the way Hopper does it is he, like he bullshits him about it being about Alexi picking like. A, a very dangerous man like a Russian child killer and just the back and forth with Hopper and this guy as the guy's getting more agitated Todd his name was is just really funny stuff and, and Hopper just is full blown Hopper where he just like bullshits his way out of it doesn't listen to the guy and just drives off and as I said they're, he- they're heading to UFO guys house in sh- or place in, I mean house is the wrong word it's like this really uh, like armoured up underground lair as we saw last season when Jonathan and Nancy went there so they go there it's the normal security system and UFO guy obviously starts talking Russian with Alexei but he also has this really funny scan that he scans him with and he just stands there for ages scamming him and you just see how paranoid he is and once again Hopper gets impatient but Joyce takes control and this is some of Joyce's best stuff on this show is where she just loses her patience because in general she's not really that sort of character but just occasionally just to like rush things through and and get on with things she she'll just cut to the mustard and just put someone in their place like she does with UFO guy I I forget his name so I just keep calling him UFO guy and she just yeah we've been through all this we've walked from in here from Indiana Hawkins Indiana and and all this she goes through what they've been through and we just need you to get on and communicate with this guy now. And I, I actually enjoyed Hopper's little smirk as they walk past. So that's that's solid, enjoyable stuff. And Alexi, so far, quite the endearing character as I remember him. <clears throat> so the final side of the plot, the Mike, Al, etc. group... And it's getting to the point where there's a lot of characters to talk about in each group. And that group expands this episode because Nancy and Jonathan join. And then Nancy gets Jonathan out of bed early. He's been having a bit of a late night, but she gets him to come with him. And they talk to the gang and Nancy says then a similar thing has happened to Billy happened to Mrs. Drisdale, um, and it happened around about the same time, so they work out that there is some sort of a connection, and that there are other hosts. It's not just Billy that this thing has attached itself to. There are other people around the town, because I actually like when Al mentions about Nancy, the pool girl, and both... Nancy and Jonathan, Heather I should say, I think I said Nancy, Heather, both Nancy and Jonathan know her and they know that she's the daughter of Tom, their their boss at the newspaper or their ex-boss, so that's when they click then something's not quite right with Tom and that 
as her father, then he's probably been infected as well, which of course he is. So they all team up and go to the hospital and like the receptionist will only let two of their men include like one of them's Nancy because she's already got in 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 the previous episode claiming to be like Miss Adresso's I think it was niece or something some sort of relation anyway so so sh- sh- they'll only let two in at a time though so it, it's Nancy and Jonathan which sort of makes sense because they have this awkward exchange in the elevator because they haven't really talked since the whole fight so they they do make up and and nancy at first is is a little bit i i didn't really mean what i said yesterday but jonathan cuts her off and says i was just i was completely wrong you know so just let that be a thing and and don't don't let this be a common thing where I, when i admit this stuff to you and so, so they actually make up and it's fine but they go in and it leads to the end of the episode and it keeps cutting back and forth between them and the kids and there's some nice stuff where they're obviously Mike's trying to win Al back because she's still officially like dumped him as Will reminds her and Mike is trying to convince the others that they're just taking a break from each other and there's actually a scene back in the house where, like, Al and Max are in the bathroom for age, and I like Lucas's line about girls just like the bathroom, <laughs> and and it's a good moment where Max shouts at Mike, then you know we can still hear you, um, and reminds him then yeah Al did like dump his ass, but later at the hospital Lucas sort of helps. Mike out because he he when they're waiting like at at the waiting room and they go and get some like food Lucas distracts Mike sorry Max and Mike actually gets to talk to Al and gives her some M&Ms which I guess is maybe another treat she's never had and, and just says I really like your new look and stuff so you can tell that they're starting to like mend fences but as I said, this is cut between the Nancy and Jonathan stuff at the end, which I absolutely love. This once again goes full on like horror, and it's really tense and and it's really like well directed because it's sort of split between the two of them where they go to Mrs. Driscoll's room, but she's been moved, and Tom comes out of nowhere, and once again, this is quite a graphic little scene because. He starts just wailing away on on Jonathan. Jonathan really takes like a pounding at the end here. And Nancy saves him at first like he stabs Tom in the back of the neck with some scissors. But the chase is sort of on. Like you you get the other sort of reporter at the paper. the, The one who's played by Jake Boosie. He starts coming after Nancy like stalking her down the hall. And at the same time, Jonathan is still in the in the room, so he's once again being attacked by Tom. And the Jake Busey character, as he's going after Nancy, is is just like saying things like, "Nancy Drew, where are you? I'm coming for you." And once again, it's just like sort of like sort of friendly little cute little phases like that, but t- turned into something a bit more sinister and. But it's just really well shot, the whole thing, because you've got flashing lights and it's all very sort of tense. And it cuts between them as they start to fight back, like, eventually. Because one of the things I really like the most is when Nancy goes badass, because it really, you know, subverts her character. And I think the actress, you can tell, has a good time whenever she gets to be, like, the badass and... You wonder if it, in this sort of scene it's almost like playing up to that kind of like Sigourney Weaver type character where or Sarah Connor where she does get to be like a badass in, in this kind of genre where at the time a lot of women didn't get to be. But 
So when the Busey character is coming after, he starts doing like the Marco Polo thing, and he's like Marco, and out of nowhere, Nancy's like Polo, and like smashes him with the fire extin- extinguisher. And she smashes him a couple more times, says, go to hell. And at the same time, Jonathan finally gets a shot in on Tom, like, and he stabs him in the neck with, like, something. It's either a needle or scissors and sort of puts him down. So it's a nice little duel thing where they both take them out at the same time. But then... There's there's a good practical... I, I think this is good practical effects, but you see both of them, like, literally melt like a pool of goo, and to me, anyway, it was a satisfying, slimy effect, and we see what we've seen before with the... with these things, where they, like, sliver away, and they slowly come together, and, and this time, which is something we haven't seen, they actually... Like the two halves come together and they actually form to make a monster, and and that's it. That's the end of the episode. That's the last shot. It becoming a monster. So, oh my god, shit's gonna go down even more in the next one. So, that's that's another dramatic ending. So, good stuff once again. Stranger Things three. So, episode five. Let me know your thoughts. In the comments below, like and subscribe as always. Get me up on social media. Support me at patreon.com slash board now. And I'll be back with more Stranger Things soon. Thanks guys.